Ho ho. Yo ho ho. Welcome back to the worm. My name is uh Stinky Ryan. It's time for time for a shower, I think. Hopefully you guys have been watching along. Uh the last couple episodes, I think I finished up my uh outdoor shower. For the years that I've been living in a tent out in the woods here, I have had a shower. I call it a shower. I mean it used to be a pallet with a big burner, a big propane burner, a big pot. You just get the water hot, you dump it on your head. You know, sometimes use some soap if you're feeling fancy. And then I think it was last year, took that apart, built a really nice outdoor shower, shower all out of cedar trees. Of course, I built everything, you know, make the lumber with the chainsaw. But that is, uh, the shower is 100% cedar. I thought that'd be a good idea to keep it from rotting, you know, because it's wet all the time and the water just falls through the floor. Anyway, in the winter, gets kind of hard to use it when it's really cold. It's hard to stand out there wet. So I uh, got out my uh, industrial sewing machine. We made side covers for it. Front cover with a couple zips, bunch of windows. It's gorgeous and I haven't used it yet. I have a couple of five gallon buckets in here of water that I'm gonna take out to the shower. Since the heat's only at uh, 41 in here, it's probably still mostly ice, but I'm gonna haul it out there. Try that shower out. Turn the heater on. There's a heater in the shower. Can you believe it? And then uh, first thing tomorrow, it's back to cutting and dragging cedar trees. I got one or two that are down, already uh, limbed up and ready to drag up here. And then, uh, yeah, we'll start building back up in the walls. I've only done this wall just so I could put that heater in here. I guess I'll probably cut this stand of cedars, I'll probably mill it all, and just do as much as I can. I don't know. Uh, I don't really have a sense for how many board feet I'm going to get out of those trees. There might be four or five that are really good another four or five that are pretty small and then a bunch of junk so i'll just do as much of the walls as i can if i can't get to the ceiling now that's totally fine i'm going to leave it because once i get the wall boards up to i don't know four or five feet then i could put my i'm going to build my bed back here uh nothing really in the corner i'm going to leave that open just to get access to the heater and then i'm going to make my beautiful giant desk out of that spalted cedar i found it's going to be a lot of chainsawing a lot of cutting trees a lot of bucking trees a lot of milling but I'm used to it. That's all I do. That's all I've done for years. And never once, let me think. No, in almost three years, I've never been bored out here, which is kind of crazy because 90, what, 98% of the time I'm by myself out here. I mean, if you got access to a couple chainsaws, a bunch of uh, secondhand nails and a chainsaw mill, like how could you possibly get bored? All right, let's check on this water here. Oh yeah, there's still a big ice block in there. That's all right, we'll make do. <laughs> Tell me that isn't pretty. Go ahead, I dare ya. Gosh, it looks so sweet. Love it. been storing some water buckets in here so they're frozen solid as soon as I get the cabin all put together let's see actually maybe I'll make my bed my bunk just like just high enough up to hold I don't know what do you think a dozen five gallon buckets under there that'd be a good place to keep them out of the way you wouldn't have to look at them maybe I can make some kind of cover or something so you're not staring at a bunch of plastic buckets but in the winter I'm only showering at best every two days like every two to three days or something so you know I shower I do use a little more water in the sh in the uh, winter. I don't think this pot holds quite five gallons, but I use a whole pot, so maybe four gallons. So anyway, if you had a dozen buckets, I don't know, you do the math. <laughs> I can't do that stuff. Not when I'm this dirty anyway. I'm told that this big buddy heater burns through uh, propane pretty fast. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking you, you dump the water in the pot, you light the burner, you turn this on low, maybe, I don't know, warm up the air or something. And then you got to wait about 20 minutes if it's water, maybe up to 45 minutes if it's ice. So once the water's up to, you know, 100 to 104, you come back in here, you turn this thing on high and get naked. It's kind of cool. You can do one side on low, one side on high, or both sides on high, I think. Wow, that is a weird ice cube. Oh yeah, look at that bizarre chunk of ice. Huh, looks like a tumbler glass, doesn't it? <laughs> Ooh, well, there you go. Glass all over the place. Is that much? 
much ice? I'm thinking 25 minutes. Woo, man, it's already warming up in here. Wow, this is sweet. It's been on what, a minute and a half? I bet the air temp right here is at least 70. <laughs> it works. I finally invent something that works. All right, give it a few minutes, give her a go. Turned on low. It's not. Uh, it's not cold in here. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> Crank this thing up. Oh yeah, I'm a little early. I'm still a little. Yeah, it's warm. Sometimes the ice just stays on top, and the water in the bottom gets hot. It's probably only 70. Yeah, 75. But the cool thing is I can hang out in here for another five, six, eight minutes till it gets up to temperature and not freeze my butt off. All right, I'm gonna give it a go. Uh, if you wouldn't mind just uh, turning around, just kind of avert your eyes, I'd appreciate it. Oh, so good. That was amazing. <laughs> the weirdest thing was that because of the difference in temperature from the top to the bottom, there was tons of steam about from shoulder level down. Like you could barely see the floor and up here, nothing. <laughs> All right, see you in the morning. We'll cut some trees. All right, it's time to cut. I've had my French toast. I got the day today. It's supposed to get windy this afternoon and tomorrow it's supposed to rip. We're also supposed to get like four or five inches of snow tomorrow, even though the temperature is like 38. So that's going to be garbage. And since I won't get to cut tomorrow and I still have my sewing machine here, I'm going to make a bunch of covers for stuff. I changed the oil in my generator yesterday. I tried to change the oil in this thing, but I keep a tarp. It's not generally underneath this overhang. You just keep a tarp over it. And of course it fills up with water and it leaked. So it went down inside there where the cutting blades are and filled that thing like half full. So it was just bound in ice. I couldn't pull the handle or anything. So I had to take the entire thing apart. Chipped most of the ice out of there so the flywheel would turn. However, there's still ice like in some of the cutters. So when you start it, the thing vibrates like crazy. And I wasn't gonna take it back apart again. I I don't know, I'm, I'm hoping tomorrow when it's 36 degrees, if it's under here and doesn't get snowed on, maybe the ice inside will melt at least sink to the bottom and then I can start it, get it warm, change the oil. Anyway, here's my point. I'm gonna make a cover for this thing so it doesn't fill up with ice water again. I'm also gonna make a cover for this sucker because, you know, sometimes people come to visit. I take this down the trail to pick them up with their car and have to bring their stuff up here, but if it's raining or snowing, their stuff gets all wet. It's also nice when I'm out cutting trees, uh, I like to not have to put all my tools away at the end of every day. So if this has a good waterproof cover, I can put my chainsaws and axes and everything in there, throw the cover on it and leave it wherever I'm working. I was also planning to make an overhang for the propane bottles on the back of the cabin and the man cave. I just, there's not enough time to do all of it at the same time. So I got all that extra green canvas from the shower and make covers for that too. Anyway, since I'm going to be inside sewing tomorrow, I was thinking of dragging all this stuff in there and I might as well take my fantastical big fat cedar boards under there inside to dry out since so now I'm leaving the uh, heater on low uh, 24 hours a day. And I also want to take this in here. I feel kind of bad that uh, I'm several months behind on carving people's names in here, but it's been iced up. I keep shoveling it off and hoping I get one day where it melts. The problem right now is that, where are the screw holes? All these screw holes are full of ice. I tried chipping a couple of them out. I can't can't get it out of there. So even though it's going to be snow raining tomorrow, I wonder if this will thaw out enough I can pull those screws out. And then, like I said, I'll take all this apart, put it inside the cabin, give it a couple weeks, couple months, something to dry out, plane the whole thing off, carve everybody's name in there, get nice and caught up, and then uh, put like 16 coats of varnish on the whole thing. Don't hold me to 16. I mean, it might only be 14. All right, let's go cut some stuff. All right, where do we start here? I guess uh, 
got that nice open area there, so put as many down there as possible. Holy cow, this is going to be a lot of work. <laughs> I've cut a lot of trees in the last few years, but, uh, you know, it's kind of like childbirth. You, I, I understand this stuff, you might not, but you forget just how much freaking work it is. Yeah, actually, I, I don't know anything about childbirth. Bottom doesn't look too good, but maybe it'll clear up as I get up there a little further. It's a relatively straight tree, so it'd be nice to get a couple logs out of that. Well, I was hoping to get some 12 footers, but this has got a little bit too much taper. If you take a 12 footer out of this, you only get a couple boards out of the middle, and all this thick part will be garbage. So, let's see if we get two logs out of it. You were fine. You were you were fine. I love the weird colors you find in this wood. Can you see that? Crazy green. So cool. Oh man, it has been blowing hard. Looks like there was, there were gusts way over 40. It goes perfectly calm. Oh yeah, some stuff fell down. Perfectly calm and then just a roar coming through the woods. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but this is all wet. That's all wet just from the snow and rain going perfectly sideways. Well, I got the heat on in the cabin, so uh, I'm gonna make a couple things real quick. These are the propane tanks back here, and this thing was completely, yeah, completely ripped through. Of course, that was supposed to be temporary. Let's get a bunch of snow up here, and then the heater inside, because it's not insulated, melts it. All the water runs down here and freezes, and this gets to be like a giant shell of ice. So I have to come out and bust it off in order to get the cans out from there. I want to put an overhang there, but not right now. Just going to sew up a quick, like, bag cover for that. And then... Same sort of thing back here. This uh, will have a roof on it. I'm thinking about doubling these propane cans. It's got that automatic switch rover, and I'm thinking about putting two cans on either side. So it would drain two, then flip itself over to the other two. 
because this does not last long, 140 pound bottle. So I think for now, I was thinking I might just put some twist lock connectors on the wall there and just make basically like one big sheet that comes down over this and it's wide enough I can wrap it around the sides. That's the quickest, easiest thing I can think to do right now. Just gotta be spending my time building stuff on the inside of the cabin. 55 in here, not bad at all. Still, my uh, worn out $6 slippers uh, don't do much to keep my toes from freezing in here. See how you can see through the floor. Yeah, I mean, there's a, you know, a tenth of a millimeter thick uh, piece of plastic under there that's insulating everything. So that's good. These are all the scraps from the shower. Let's see if any of them are big enough to do anything with. Yeah, I don't think so. Long and skinny, that's it. That's not really gonna help. Well, we'll see if we end up with scraps from something else. Could always use these just to tack on to something, make a bigger panel. All right, this is just a flap for the propane and the cabin. Just a big rectangle, so that'll be easy. I'm gonna try to do all of these, cut them all out and then sew them all. Oh, I think I got a break from the uh, rain for about half a second. I got to go get the uh, Jackery battery in here for it. it gets nasty. Make a cover for that shipper, which is just going to be, I can just barely get a square out of one of these scraps. It's just going to be a square and like a, whatever it is, three or four foot skirt all the way around. Ain't going to be pretty, but it should keep the water and ice from filling up in there again. If anybody ever wondered what these are for, the scissors with the little sawtooth edge on it. This will be the, the top, and then the sides will sew right to the edge of this. And I'm not going to double under this raw edge or anything so it doesn't unravel. So if you cut it like that... With the pinking shears it shouldn't it doesn't unravel quite as much anyway you can see you can't really like pull anything out of it so most of this i'm not gonna they're just covers for tools and stuff i'm not gonna do it prettily so i'll just do the edges like that you can see if you just have a raw cut edge like that how this stuff comes out of it on the other side nothing isn't that magic god that's magic This is for the propane cover behind the man cave. I need some lights in here. I had this idea since this uh, ceiling is quite tall. I was thinking about getting a bunch of cheap oil lamps and taking them apart and then making some kind of chandelier in here. <laughs> I think, uh, well, I guess maybe it'd be too close to the ceiling. I don't know, maybe I could make some kind of steel cover on it or something so the heat didn't go up and set this place on fire. But it'd be cool if it was like three or four or six or eight oil lamps and you could just lower it down and light them all, pull them back up there and have it light the room. I'm chopping up all these scraps to sew together to go around the edge of my uh, trailer on my four-wheeler. Great use of scraps. Oh, I got everything cut out, I think, and slightly pinned together. It's a good thing I used the pins, because this is about 25 pieces of fabric that all look exactly the same. Let's see if I can figure out how this is supposed to get stitched together. one done. I'm not going to show a whole bunch of sewing because it's all going to look exactly the same. It's all green. It's all got like this 
two inch hem along the bottom just in case I want to put some grommets or snaps on it or something. And they're basically just, just big green bags. I think this is for the uh, propane behind the man cave. Let me rip off a couple more of these and I'll show you. If you are into uh, sewing, canvas building, that kind of stuff, I think the last couple of videos, or I don't know, a couple of recent videos were finishing up that shower, closing it all the way in. And I also did, I think I did two other videos in the last few years. One was uh, customizing my tent for the winter. And I can't remember what the other one is. I'll try to find it. If you want to see any of that kind of stuff, canvas making stuff, I'll put the links to all those in the description of the video. I really got to get this done quick because it's a little bit above freezing. I think I can get that picnic table apart today. Alright, there's the cover for the chipper. Man, it seems huge. It'll work, it'll work. Much better, much better. Should be a step up from that ratty tarp. It's not gonna be a super snug fit, but I don't wanna have to rustle it over the top of this. Is it rustle or rassle? Never can remember. Yeah, that's pretty good. Picnic table. I'm going to number these so I remember how to put it back together. Oh, that was easy. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. It's a good thing I used those nice deck screws. In case anybody's new to this channel, uh, I, I don't think I did make a, a video building this, but I made this out of one cedar log. It was a big old log. It looks like it was probably 15 inches diameter or something. And then, you know, all the, the frame and everything are just chunks of leftover lumber. There wasn't a whole lot of planning that went into this. You can see it's basically like pieces of firewood that I just quartered with the chainsaw. Same with this. This is just, I think it's just a leftover uh, big fat scrap from milling. It's a cool table, but uh, of course I didn't know I was going to be using it for years when I built it. So I uh, didn't even put varnish on it or anything. And then eventually I started putting people's names in it. These are folks that donate uh, five bucks a month or more on Patreon. I carved their name after, you know, three, four, 15 months, whatever. And once I got a lot of lot put in there, I could see the water was going into the names and spreading out. It's kind of rotting, so I dumped, pretty much dumped several coats of varnish on it, but it was cheap varnish, not the right stuff. So anyway, the plan is to take this thing apart, throw these five boards in the cabin now that there'll be heat on for the rest of the winter. I don't know how long it'll take. My guess is, I don't know, what do you think, a month, two months or something? It's really lightweight. It's cedar, so I think the moisture will come out of it pretty quickly. I don't know. We'll see. As soon as it's dry enough, then uh, I'm going to stick it through the planer, make this really pretty on the top again, catch up and carve everybody's name, and then it's going to get supremely varnished, so hopefully those names will last a long time. If you've been thinking about donating to the channel and you want to get your name carved, I uh, recommend doing it before, I don't know, whenever it's going to be, you guess, a couple months, few months? But if you get in before I plane this and refinish it, your name will be carved in it and it'll actually be sealed into the table. I haven't really figured out what I'm going to do for people that uh, donate after I refinish this thing. I kind of hate to get it all prettied up, get a whole bunch of varnish on it, and then carve names through the varnish. So the same thing happens again, it all rots out. I don't know, we'll have to think about it. Think about the rules after this thing gets redone. That's pretty wet. Uh oh. Oopsie. Left a screw in there. Well, out now. These are soaked through and really heavy. 
Now I'm kind of wondering if I take them in the cabin, if they're even going to dry out. What to do? I mean, it would dry out best in the summer, but I got to use the table in the summer. I'm not sure what to do. It's also going to be a pain now that <laughs> Well, let's see how big and heavy these are to keep these in the cabin all winter long. <laughs> Look at all this dirt and ice. There's like little trees growing in here. I think I just, yeah, I just had an idea. I'm going to take them all in there for now, just lean them against the wall. And then when I get a second, I'm going to hang them all from the ceiling. It'll by far get the most heat of anywhere in there and it'll get them out of the way and it'll be kind of cool to have this raggedy name written boards just like looking straight down from the ceiling. I think that's I think that's a swell idea. Let's do it. I just had another thought. I can also just let these dry out enough that I can actually plane them. So next time I get the planer out, I don't know what that'll be for. Of course, everything will have to not be frozen. Maybe that won't, maybe that will not be anytime soon. But if I can plane the top of them off and then put them back up there to dry before I varnish them, I could still be carving names in them and I could show them to you on the cabin ceiling. That would be cool, wouldn't it? All right, this is gonna work. I don't want you to worry. I got the chipper started and it was thawed out enough that it didn't rattle itself to pieces. There's just always so much to do. Is this why people get married? It's like one person can change the oil in the chipper while another one makes uh, covers for the propane tanks. Or one person charges the batteries while the other one heats up the hot tub. It would be awfully handy to have more than just one person out here. But holy crap, is it nice being alone. I love being alone. If I ever get the cabin finished up and have my 3D printer out, I'll make a couple little brackets that go on here and then I'll just take a thin piece of steel or wood or something and bend it just to keep the water from pooling inside here again. Oh, uh, what is that? Two down? Three down? Let's see if this thing will work. I was thinking centered. Sort of like that, maybe. These are the little uh, twist lock fasteners. Probably seen those before. So the fabric will get a grommet in there. Goes over top of this. You twist it to, to keep it on. So then I'm just gonna put, I don't know, maybe four of them or something. They'll get screwed in here. I'll go put the grommets on first. Got this little guy that's uh, for soldering. I use it for cutting canvas. Just got kind of a, like a pencil-y tip on here, but I ground it off flat so that you can cut nice straight lines in canvas with it. used to do this with a torch that had a similar end, but this thing is just a lot easier to use. Just burn the foot holes out there. And then this is the grommet with the feet on the back. Just stick through the holes. I'll put one of these washers on the back of it. And then you just bend the feet over. And then it's good to have this nice hot knife and you can just cut the fabric out with it quite easily. They also have a punch that does this all at the same time. It'll cut the whew, cut the hole and the four feet out. But I like doing it this way. The hot knife seals the, the corners of it. And then this guy will just go through on the wall. Like, yeah.
I think that's going to work pretty well for now. I guess it could have made it a little wider, but I was thinking this would be enough to keep it off the tops of the tanks. I guess it will. The good thing is it's not on the side of the roof that slopes down, so there's not really much that comes off this side. It'll just be, you know, whatever falls out of the sky. And the other good thing is it's an easy, it's easy to check this. Just do that, look at it, or I guess you could just unsnap these because this thing switches over automatically. Looks like we still got some in the first tank, and then once it switches over, you just wouldn't know it unless you came out and checked every now and then. So I think that'll be good. Make sure this thing fits before I put all the sewing stuff away. Yup. Sweet. That'll keep uh, drizzle off the tools anyway. You can see all the seams in the side of it. That was 100% scraps. I just took anything that was 23 inches wide. I just cut whatever size piece out of it. So 23, 23, 23, and stuck them all together. So yeah, lots of seams, lots of seams. All right, I think the sewing's done for a while, which means I gotta get some lunch and uh, get back to cutting trees. The temperature is pretty stellar right now. Uh, it's just under freezing, and I think I got a couple more days and then it's gonna dive. I saw a few days from now, I think it said um, six or seven degrees overnight. When it gets that cold, uh, I'm glad I'm not in a tent. Still feels really weird to not see a tent right there. Very bizarre. I still have my clothes out there though. That's my dresser right there. <laughs> I've noticed for pretty much all of my adult life, I get bored of doing things after around three years. Like I'll live someplace and after three years, ah, I gotta move somewhere else. Just try something different out or like get into something, you know, a sport or a hobby or whatever. After three years, I'm kind of done with it. I want to learn something new. And it's been about three years, so this is, I was thinking about this last night. It's actually good that I took the tent down. Didn't want to stay in here because I like being in a tent, like being outside, but I think it's good for me. It kind of, uh, I don't know, it's like, you know, you move into a new house or something. It's just kind of different. It's a different ambiance, different set of things to think about. I don't want to do it very much longer, but when it's, you know, seven degrees or something, it's going to be nice to be in there. As soon as I get those uh, trees, the rest of those trees cut and get them milled up, could start uh, start finishing off the inside of the cabin. There, I'd like to stay. Let's see how this thing's doing. Oh yeah, keeping the ice right off there. Not bad. All right, where were we here? Uh, I guess we got to go for these guys next and drop them out there. You know, I'm gonna get quite wet doing this. I might have to try smacking the trees and see if I can get some of the snow out of there, or I'm gonna be dripping. You don't hit the tree, then look up and wait for it. Uh, uh, that's not getting much out of there. Ah, that one got me again. It's a good thing I got a heater now. I was hoping I'd be able to get this down without pounding wedges because it's the wedges that make the snow fall out. Oh, I can push it. Man, I'm strong. So close. All right, I got a couple uh, marginal saw logs and a bunch of little ones out of here, and I'm trying to decide what's worth cutting now. Got these uh, 
an aspen here and that's big leaning aspen those are definitely going to get hugely hung up in those trees and with super cold weather coming in uh and a lot of snow on the radar i'm thinking i'm just going to grab two more trees out of here if i can get them out actually this one's terrific but it's not cedar so i'm going to leave that standing it's probably going to have to come out because the shooting range is going to go right through here it's just going to get blasted with lead eventually uh the rest of these are yeah really no good whatever my next big building project ends up being that'll make some sweet two by fours with just these two that i'd really like to grab now the rest of this will just have to get cleared out sometime down the line uh probably pull those out actually when i'm ready to to really work on the shooting range the trouble with these is this one is leaning right into here which is going to get all snaggled. The only place I can think to try to make it fall is right down this trail. I might be able to get it to go right in there. Even then, it's going to be oh, it's going to be a beast. I'm definitely going to get soaked with all the snow in those little trees there. If I can make that work, then this one will be a little more open. I can probably get it to go that way. It's actually leaning that direction. Sometimes what you want to do is just look at them once, make a plan, and go for it. This is actually horrible tree felling advice, <laughs> so don't don't listen to me. But sometimes you look at these so long and there's not a good option. You pick the best option and then you just spend another hour going, it's just not a great option, man. It's just not a great option. Just I'm just going to do it. I'm going to drop it in that hole right there and I don't know, it's going to be a pain to clean up and that's just fine. That was actually pretty sweet the way it rolled all the limbs are pointing straight up so it'll be a lot easier to clean up than having to climb through all the snowy trees about three minutes till it gets dark. I could take all my tools up, but no. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just cover them up. Man, did I invent the cover? I think I did. Somebody invented the tarp in like 1603 and it wasn't till this year that somebody invented the cover. Look at that, isn't that great? You don't seem very impressed. Well, oh, whatever. You can stay down here and freeze your butt off. Be unimpressed, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, one more tree left. Got that guy all cleaned up. Man, that trailer cover was, it was very covery. It really covered. I should have made one of those a long time ago. All right, I think I'm gonna get uh, pretty wet on this one. Gonna have to wedge it over. Tito's out there somewhere strolling in the woods. So uh, if I time this just right, maybe I can hit him as he comes back up that trail. <laughs> Did I scare ya? <laughs> Scared me, I was just watching that camera. That was pretty close. <laughs> there was just about a half a second where I considered trying to grab that tripod. Not a good idea. Well, I went just in the right spot again.
right, I think we got enough logs for our project here. Actually, I kind of think that's probably enough to do almost the whole inside of the cabin, which is fantastic. I don't know whether I'll get to putting all the boards up and the ceiling and everything now, but it'd be nice if I didn't have to cut more trees. Check this out. That is a pretty good stash. These uh, giant logs, this one, this one, this one, and this one, I found were all blowdowns. You know, the root balls were sticking up, so I wouldn't have cut them otherwise. They're huge, healthy trees, but it's great to add to my stash here. So I'm gonna, I guess, well, it's not supposed to be snowing, but it's been snowing for a couple hours now. This is the kind of thing, it's not in the forecast. It's maybe, what, under the radar or something? I don't know what's going on. It'll just snow like this all day. So I'm gonna slowly get wet, but that's all right. Of course, my chainsaws are gonna get all wet and my mill and all my tools and everything, but what are you gonna do? It's winter. Yesterday, I was gonna take those uh, nice boards for my desk inside there, and I looked at them. They're tarped, they've been under there for a while. They're quite dry, so I don't think they need to dry out any faster. I'm just gonna leave them under that tarp until I need them, and you know, like I said, I'll build the things, use it, use the desk, the tables, whatever I make out of it for the winter, and then, you know, in the summertime when it's completely dry, I'll take them apart, plane them, and then maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll epoxy everything. Oh, they're all frozen together already. Wow. There we go. I think this might be a disaster because this stuff wasn't quite frozen when I drug it and now it is so I bet it's wet it's dirty it's frozen I bet I won't be able to clean the dirt off the bark and I probably won't be able to get the bark off of there It's gonna come off in little pieces and only the outer bark which is should be all right yeah, at least the dirt would come off oh. <laughs> crap that is a problem Yeah, it's a lot of frozen mud now. Wow, that totally sucked. I'm not even gonna peel all of it. You know, if you ask me, and nobody asked me, it was exactly like childbirth. Yeah, I checked, I checked, that's, it's, it's, I'm correct. Let's see if we can get these uh, screws in here without splitting the logs. I don't think it's quite cold enough to have to worry about that. Put that in my uh, firewood slash snow pile for next spring. Three quarters inch, right? Is that what we were doing? I think so.
right, I'm no longer cold. You wouldn't think just standing there pulling the trigger on a chainsaw would warm you up, but it does. I don't even have a hat on underneath this <laughs> and I'm plenty toasty. So shoot, where are we gonna put all these? Um, it's a little something I found out in the last day or two that uh, I haven't mentioned. <laughs> if I was a betting man, I'd put down my nickel on you guys liking the next video that comes out after this. By the time this actually happens, it'll be old news because, uh, you know, the videos take a long time to get together and get out, but uh, we're looking at a pretty substantial winter storm in a couple days. I've been watching the forecast two or three times a day and it goes up and down a little bit, you know, in uh, number of inches we're supposed to get, but right now I think they're saying 17 inches and also temperatures down to 12 degrees and also consistent winds of over 30 for like 48 hours. <laughs> it's gonna be gnarly. So, you you know, living out here and uh, cooking outside and trying to keep water warm and everything is, it's a challenge in the winter, it's really fun, but during a storm like that, it's, uh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be a good time not to be out in the middle of nowhere by yourself. There'll be a lot of trees down, I'm sure. And just being out here, I guess I could go in the cabin. I might have to go in the cabin. But in the man cave, with no insulation, just the sound of a storm like that for 48 hours is super stressful. Just that roar all the time and breaking branches and everything. It can really wear you out. Uh, so I was going to take off, uh, not be here for that. And uh, Tito and I chatted about it for a couple hours and kind of realized if we get the high end of what they're predicting for snow, it'd be a couple feet. And then with 30, 35 mile an hour winds, there could be just massive drifts out here. So if I leave for a couple days and then come back, I might not be able to get back in here again this season. So the only thing I have to clear trails is my four wheeler. I mean, it's four wheel drive, but it certainly won't drive. It won't plow through two feet of snow. You guys have seen the last couple winters when I get you know, three, four inches or more. I drive all the trails like three times on the four-wheeler. Just it's so much fun. Just like, just go ripping full speed just to pack all the snow down. If you don't pack it down, like if I skip one of the trails out here and we get a couple snows on top of it, I won't be able to get through there again for the season. So anyway, after a lot of uh, consideration, Tito and I decided we're gonna stay out here. He's gonna come out for, I think it's gonna be like three days. We've been talking about it since I bought the property and moved out here. Each winter we both say, you know, the worst, the absolute worst storm of the year, we should really stay out there just for fun. And we haven't had any like really horrific storms the last couple of years, or I mean, I don't know, maybe we had one or two and I just happened to be down visiting my folks or my girlfriend or something, I don't remember. But this is gonna be one for the books, I hope. I hope it doesn't peter out in the next couple of days. It, it looks like it's gonna be the real deal. It's all of Michigan's just gonna get blasted. So we're gonna stock up on, uh, he's gonna bring up a bunch of extra water. I'm gonna fill all my propane tanks right to the top. We'll bring a bunch of food. Obviously, you know, when he comes out here, usually if we eat dinner or something, we always barbecue over the fire, even if it's the middle of the winter. Not gonna be able to do that, not with wind like that. So as much as I really don't wanna be cooking in the cabin, just because it attracts animals, the smell, we're gonna have to do it. And we'll probably take turns over those two or three days. We'll have to take turns putting all of our uh, snowmobile clothes on, hopping on the four-wheeler and going and plowing out the parking area. And also like every three hours, just taking turns, blasting down all the trails and packing them down. It's gonna be nuts. I'm really looking forward to it. We went back and forth for, yeah, like I said, like a couple hours. We're like, yeah, just not worth trying to be out there. You know, with trees, the trees will be coming down. The roads won't be passable probably for a couple of days afterwards. It'd be so bad, especially since the wind picks up at the end of the storm and then it gets really cold. So, you know, salt in Michigan, they salt the roads and salt doesn't work when it's 11 degrees. And the more wind there is, more you get just iced up roads. Yeah, it's gonna be sweet. So uh, anyway, you guys should definitely come back next week. But I got two days. I got uh, basically today and tomorrow to work on milling these logs. This pile will take me at least that long, mostly because it takes almost as long to peel the logs as it does to mill. But I'll get whatever I can get done in the next couple days, and then it's going to be uh, a few days of storm, probably a few more days to dig everything out. And then if the temperatures come back up and the wind drops, we'll get back to the cabin. i got to figure out right now where I'm going to put all this lumber. I've got two small stacks. Those are all the best boards that I saved. I didn't put on the outside of the cabin. Same with those, a little bit longer, but picture of that with uh, a couple feet of snow. It'd be kind of cool. It'd be 
I don't know, maybe with some drifts we might not even have stairs here. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm getting back to milling. Thanks everyone for watching. Hope to see you next week. Uh, I, I have a feeling we'll have smiles on our faces. <laughs> I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think uh, Tito's loading up his iPad with a bunch of movies and I don't know. I don't know what we'll do. I think he might even bring his uh, guitar and maybe his bass out or something. We could just sit in the cabin for two days and pluck. Pluck and get fat. It's going to be great. Thanks for watching. See ya.